In this video, we want to look at infinite limits and limits at infinity. So from our studies before on limits, we know that the limit does not exist when the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x does not the limit equal the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x. So we know that the two-sided limits have to be the same for the limit to exist. In this section, we're also going to add another set of limits to the does not exist category. And those will be any limits as we take the limit as x goes to a of f of x that's equal to either plus or minus infinity. Now in many cases, it is important to know whether or not that limit is plus infinity or minus infinity. But by definition, limits that equal plus or minus infinity are said to be does not exist. So the limit of a rational expression with a fixed numerator and a denominator that approaches zero is always going to be plus or minus infinity or be referred to as a limit that does not exist. So again, if we have a fixed numerator, a constant number at the top, and a denominator that approaches zero, then that limit's always going to be either plus or minus infinity. So let's consider an example. Consider the limit as x approaches 1 over 1 divided by x minus 1. This is one of the basic functions that you've recalled. That's just 1 over x has been translated one unit to the right. Notice that when x is equal to 1, the numerator approaches 0. So we have a picture of the graph to the right. Now if we make a sine line, because we know from our previous slide that either this limit's going to be plus infinity or minus infinity, all we need to do is determine which one um, it is, depending on whether or not we're approaching one from the left or the right. So from our sign line, we have the factor x minus 1 to consider, because 1 is positive, so the sign of the entire limit is going to be determined by that numerator. If we pick a value to the left of 1, then x minus 1 is negative. If we pick a value to the right of 1, then x minus 1 is positive. So for example, if we pick the value like 0, which is to the left of 1, 0 minus 1 is negative, so all values to the left of 1 are negative. Similarly, if we picked a value to the right of 1, like 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, which is positive, so all values on the right-hand side of 1 cause the factor x minus 1 to be positive. So again, as we approach from the left, one from the left, we see that the x minus 1 is getting closer to 0, but it always carries just a little negative sign. So as we approach 1 from the left, the function is going to minus infinity, and that bears out from our graph, as you see. Similarly, as we approach 1 from the right, x minus 1 is always a little positive as it approaches 0. And so 1 divided by something that goes to 0 is going to be positive infinity. So as we approach 1 from the left, that limit is negative infinity. And as we approach 1 from the right, the limit is positive infinity. So this means the limit does not exist at x equals 1. Certainly not, because there are different limits from the left and the right. And if you look at the graph, what we also see is that the function f of x equals 1 over x minus 1, which again is very similar to that function 1 over x, has a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. You all know that the function 1 over x has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Now what can we see from the calculus that might help us determine later on when we have vertical asymptotes? Well notice that as we approach x equals 1 from the left, the limit was minus infinity, and as we approach x equals 1 from the right, the limit was plus infinity. So we might be able to use this information to kind of develop a way to determine when and where we have vertical asymptotes for particular functions. And so if we think about it, we see that vertical asymptotes will occur at a point x equals c, where the limit as x approaches c from the right of f of x is plus or minus infinity, and the limit as x approaches c from the left of f of x is equal to plus or minus infinity. Remember that vertical asymptotes are asymptotes that cannot be crossed by the graph. So if you have a limit on one side of the asymptote that's plus or minus infinity and another side of the asymptote that's plus or minus infinity, or the x value, I should say, where x equals c, then you'll know that you have a vertical asymptote at x equals c. So let's look at a picture. 
So here's a graph of the function f of x is equal to x squared plus x minus 2 divided by x squared minus 1. Notice that when you look at the graph of this function, there's certainly a vertical asymptote at x equals minus 1, which is represented by the blue line. Notice that that graph, as you approach minus 1 from the left, goes to minus infinity. And as you approach minus 1 from the right, the graph shoots up to plus infinity. So it satisfies our definition of vertical asymptote perfectly at x equals minus 1. So there's a vertical asymptote at x equals minus 1. Notice also that if you look at that function in the denominator, you have the factor or, or the, uh, x squared minus 1, which would be 0 at plus and minus 1. So you might ask yourself, well, why is there not a vertical asymptote at x equals 1? It seems to be just a point of discontinuity. And that's because x plus 1, it, that factor is removable because there's an x plus 1 factor in the numerator x plus 1, I'm sorry, x minus 1. I'm sorry, that should be x minus 1. If you look at the numerator of f of x, if you plug in 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, and of course 1 is a 0 for the factor in the denominator. So there must be a factor of x minus 1 in the numerator and the denominator which would cancel each other out. So there's not actually a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. So in a few slides, we're going to want to look at what's happening at the end behavior of these functions as well. Um, what happens when x goes to plus infinity or minus infinity. But before we do that, I'd like for you to consider this particular problem and work this out and bring it with you to class. Are there any vertical asymptotes for the function f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x minus 2? And explain why or why not. Okay, so now we might want to consider what happens to a function as x approaches plus or minus infinity. So this is going to be a bit different. Now we're looking at what happens to the function as the x values go to plus infinity or minus infinity. So again, let's revisit one of our basic graphs, 1 over x. And so let's consider the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of 1 over x. And so I've made a table here. And so when x is 1, the function is 1. When x is minus 1, the function is minus 1. Look, when the function is 100, I'm sorry, when x is 100, then the functional value is 0 0.01. When the, function, um, when the x is minus 100, the functional value is minus 0 0.01. And so what you see from this table is that as x gets large, f of x actually gets closer and closer to 0. And so we might be able to come up with something that we can use for all cases of this type. So the limit of a function with a constant numerator and x in the denominator as x approaches plus or minus infinity is always going to be 0. So if we have a constant in the numerator and some x in the denominator and we're taking a limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity, then this limit will always be 0. So the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of 1 over x is equal to 0. And similarly, the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of k divided by x to any power p is equal to 0. Of course, that's where p is a positive exponent. Another theorem says that the limit of all polynomials as x approaches plus or minus infinity is always plus or minus infinity. And we could show this by just thinking about a polynomial as a train. And the train has as its engine the term with the highest power. And that's the term that I'm looking at here, which is k times x to the power of p. And we know that polynomials would have many terms that were smaller. But the idea with a polynomial when we're talking about x approaching plus or minus infinity is that the engine takes the train wherever it goes. And so if the highest power is p, certainly Parts of the polynomial that have powers that are less than p cannot control where the highest power goes. So if we just simply look at the highest power, we know that the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity of k times x to the power of p would certainly have to be plus or minus infinity. And the only thing that would change or we'd have to consider is 
whether or not that term k times x to the p was positive or negative. And so what could control that? Well, the k, it may be negative or positive, and the power of p. Because if we're going to negative infinity and the power of p is negative, then the whole term would be negative. Similarly, if we were going to negative infinity or positive infinity and the power of p was positive or even, I should say, then squaring or raising to the fourth power a negative number would make the entire term positive, right? So um, just remember that even powers of negative numbers are always going to be positive, and odd powers of negative numbers will be negative. So we'll have to consider the k and that power as we're doing problems just to determine if we're going to a plus or minus infinity. So it turns out that if the limit of a function as x approaches plus or minus infinity is a constant, say b, then there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals b. So if we take the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity of our function, and that's finite, it turns out to be a constant b, then we can then say that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals b. So let's look at a graph here. So here's a graph of our basic function. 1 over x. Notice that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And if we look, we see that the limit as we approach 0 from the left is negative infinity, and the limit as we approach 0 from the right is positive infinity. In this case, we want to check for horizontal asymptotes. So if we first look at x approaching infinity, then we see that as x approaches infinity, the y values get closer and closer to 0. So the limit as x approaches plus infinity of 1 over x is certainly 0. And also we look at the limit as x approaches minus infinity. So as x values get more and more negative, going to the left on the graph, we see that the function is getting closer and closer to 0 again. So the limit as x approaches minus infinity of 1 over x is also 0. And so this indicates that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So now we might want to consider, well, what happens if we have rational expressions? And remember, a rational expression is any expression that's represented by one polynomial divided by another. So when finding limits to infinity of rational expressions, compare the highest powers in the numerator and the denominator. Again, before I show you anything more, I just want you to visualize in your mind that a rational expression is one polynomial divided by another. And so those polynomials in the numerator and denominator are controlled by the engine or the term with the highest power. So it seems to make perfect sense that as we're looking at those limits of rational expressions, we should only need to consider the term in the numerator with the highest power and the term in the denominator with the highest power. So let's look at the three possibilities. Assuming that we had these two polynomials, one in the numerator and denominator, and the highest power in the numerator was P, so we had a term that looked like a constant a times x to the p left in the numerator. And the highest power in the denominator was q. So we had the term left in the denominator, which was c times x to the power of q. Then one possibility is that p is greater than q. Namely, the power of the exponent in the numerator is larger than the power of the exponent in the denominator. So this might be a good time for you to review how to manipulate exponents and multiply same base different exponent or divide same base and different exponent. But if you remember, you subtract those exponents. And so as you simplified a times x to the power of p divided by c times x to the power of p, you would then end up with x is left in the numerator and none in the denominator. And we know from the previous slide that if we have a polynomial going to plus or minus infinity, then that limit is plus or minus infinity. Hence, when p is greater than q, we know that this limit will always be plus or minus infinity. Well, what's another possibility? The second possibility is that you end up with a higher power in the denominator than you do in the numerator, or p is less than q. Again, from our previous slides, we know that if you have more in the bottom, namely you end up canceling away all the x's in the numerator, as you would in this case, and had only x's in the denominator, you would have something that looked like a divided by c times x to some power. And we know in that case, as x goes to plus or minus infinity, we'll always get 0. Hence, when p is less than q, this limit will be equal to 0.
And of course, you probably figured by now that the third possibility is what happens if p is equal to q. Well, if p is equal to q, x to the power of p cancels completely with x to the power of q, and all you're left with is a ratio of a divided by c. So let's look at an example and see if we can apply this. So we're asked to find a limit as x approaches infinity for this function, y is equal to 3x squared minus 5x plus 9, divided by 2x squared plus 7. Clearly this is a rational expression because there is a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. So what we've been told is that we can consider the highest power in the numerator and the highest power in the denominator. Those are the only two terms we really need to consider because all of the others are controlled by this terms. So we see that we're left with 3x squared in the numerator and 2x squared in the denominator. Clearly the x squares can cancel in this case and so we're left with 3 over 2 and that means the correct answer is that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3 halves and the limit as x approaches infinity is 3 halves. So just to show you how that looks, first we're looking at this limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of 3x squared minus 5x plus 9 over 2x squared plus 7. We only need to look at the highest power in the numerator and denominator, which are 3x squared over 2x squared, and we're taking that limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity. Canceling the x squares, we end up with 3 halves as the limit, and we know that y equals 3 halves as a horizontal asymptote. Here's a picture of the graph, and notice at 3 halves, the function is leveling off as you go to plus infinity and as you go to minus infinity.